No, my microphone stand. <laughs> It's Annabelle. It's nice to see you again. I can't wait to catch up through this Q&A. Um, uh, uh, thank you to everybody who submitted questions. Also in the description, you can jump to specific questions or come back to them. I think the easiest thing to start off with, many people are excited to learn about Bambi and Prairie, how they're doing. I expected that Prairie would be very standoffish. I said give her a week. I think it really only took her four days. We were at Lilith's for the first week when I had to organize my storage unit, but I don't want to explain all of that process too in detail because the vlog is coming out next week. Show not tell, right? Good news is after we settled into this New York space, three days or so, they were already playing, chasing each other, grooming each other, and I think like the only step left is for them to cuddle. I was a little bit worried whether or not they would feel disappointed or cabin fever from being in this studio apartment, Bambi's been living in a two bedroom, two story house for a year. And even my sister's apartment is bigger. It's a huge downgrade, but I do keep in mind just like what I feel would be healthy. I almost got another studio apartment with no view. Right off the bat, I just had a bad feeling about that place. My sister was just like, this jeopardizes cat vitality or something like that. Maybe I can take them out on walks again, but from experience, neither of them liked it very much. I don't think that the space is actually too small for the three of us here. Because like they're two tiny cats and I make sure that there's plenty of perching spots for them whether it be like all over this couch, they have their own couch, they have the castle, the tabletop, and the bed and they love to switch out their resting spots and they kind of have like this routine maybe I'll do a day in the life of Prairie and Bambi one day On to me, what am I most excited about? Living in New York, explore more of the city of course and to make new friends. I've been really anxious all my life when it comes to making friends and I have a really great set of friends. How do I say that? We're not like in a big group or anything. I, I have really strong one-on-one -on -one bonds, but now that I'm an adult and self-employed, it's just a lot harder to meet people, right? One of the reasons why I wanted to move here is the culture and the arts scene and like maybe I could get a studio residency and just be more hands-on. Yeah, in terms of that, living in New York, um, eating and exploring cool. Oh, you know what? <laughs> clubbing. I've never gone to a club or like even a party where I'm like, oh. My sister has um, a lot more expertise than me. So luckily she doesn't live far, just a train ride. She's gonna come over in the, in the uh, occasional nights where I don't sleep before 10. So I have to figure out how I'm going to. Did I always know I was gonna come to New York? No, there were maybe two or three times I was like hoping I can come to New York and even making plans or looking at apartments, but it never even solidified. In the back of my mind, I just sort of, if this dream was a balloon, I just kind of let it go and watched it float far away in the sky. I was like, it's okay. It doesn't have to be my life. I'm proud of myself for being here. I'm never bored. When I was reading the book Flow, they were kind of saying, you don't want to be in a state of either boredom or anxiety. You want to find flow. I'm always on that anxiety side, but occasionally I do find that nice flow and I enjoy my day when I plan it out nicely. Do I miss home? I've not been here long enough to feel homesick. I really enjoy the independence. I'm sure as time goes on, I will begin to miss my family, but now that I'm not in school, I... Okay, I've been having extreme brain farts. I don't know what happened here. I meant to say, now that I'm out of school, my schedule doesn't have to work around going home only on holiday breaks, which is nice. Do I miss home? It definitely gets quiet sometimes at night. I kind of just get myself in a mood to really enjoy the evening and like take it slow and stuff. I can make videos about this if you're interested. In terms of just being homesick in general, I moved around so much growing up. I never feel attached to any one place. I used to be a lot more attached to objects, which have has changed recently. But like, I think what I have the hardest time letting go of are like memories of a time where things were once like this and they would never be like that again. My yeye, which is my, my wait, what? Per paternal 
grandfather and I had a really close relationship and he's he passed away from cancer a long time ago. I had some of the most happiest memories um, of my life. So I still ruminate on a lot of those memories. It's like equal parts sorrow and joy. So here in New York, do I feel free or released? The main difference is being able to do things by my own schedule, cooking my own meals, right? Like my grandma's not there to take care of me. But at the same time, I won't feel the pressure and the guilt to say like, I need to eat dinner an hour later, like organize my time without needing to explain myself has definitely saved some mental energy. But at the same time, it was never too bad because living in my family house, um, it was really comfortable. The only huge difference is like the first time I went grocery shopping, I was just like, what the fuck? Living at home for a year has like screwed me over because I completely forgot my meal plan. It's been a long time since I've shopped for myself. I definitely don't think I'm gonna stay in New York forever. The way I eventually want to live my life, maybe have like a little store or a cafe and have like a nice quiet home with my family and I can't afford anywhere like near New York City. I just don't think that's realistic here. The worst parts of living alone, having to face the crises all by yourself at school. You know those nights where the cats would catch this mouse, maybe one was missing its head or whatever, you know, you have to pick it up yourself. So I've been paying for my own bills since I moved out of like college dorm. The only main things I rely on my mom for is phone, like we're still on a family phone plan. Other responsibilities that I'm going to look into that I haven't previously done is like renter's insurance, cat health insurance. We don't have dental insurance. So I'm going to have to go like, I have a cavity, uh, poopy parts of being an adult, of course, but inevitable. Probably gonna have to spend $300 on that cavity. Lilith doesn't live so far from me. She's in Rhode Island still, and she's gonna take the train in next week and I'm gonna see her. So I'm excited. It kind of reminds me of the Gilmore Girls uh, intro song. All you have to do is call my name and i'll be there on the next train where you lead i will follow anywhere that you tell me to i can go and visit her on a train anytime so in terms of my current job uncertainty what the hell i'm doing how many jobs am i juggling so the main thing i'm doing is youtube full time and my shop i would say i spend equal energy on both of those and then i run my patreon i have like a little bit over 400 amazing patrons that have stuck with me even though i've been the most unproductive ass in the last three months in the beginning i was like overworking myself i don't know like tr just needing to prove something to myself i think do i fear the uncertainty of this self-employment yes yes every day every waking moment you know i haven't been as active on youtube I appreciate when people say they miss me on YouTube because I'm just like, it makes me realize that I used to be a lot more productive. So as soon as I cover all my bases, like make a nice spreadsheet of my financials, I want to make enough for savings. Then we can talk about um, like, what do you call it? Like expendable income. It's worth it for me. Yes, I can be saving like thousands of dollars by living at home, but like not only is being in the suburbs just too, it's like drying me out. Full on Spongebob in the Spongebob movie. Bird needs to leave the nest, as one of my friends put it. And a viewer asked me a sort of personal question about if they should go into engineering because it ensures their livelihood in the future because if they instead major in their passion, which is literature, like maybe um, they would be unemployed and struggling. I guess my advice would be ask yourself, could you imagine yourself being happy doing engineering? If you had to go into work five days a week, probably four decades, doing this field, could you actually be happy with it? Because if you're pretty content and you can get a stable livelihood, then you can definitely take classes or go back to school for your passion. But if you just, if you cannot like go on living like that, which is kind of how I feel about 
why I needed to pursue art full time, even if it means like a life of uncertainty. Like to me, that rigor is really worth it. But also if you want to get a degree in literature and you feel like you might not immediately find a job related to your field, that's so normal. Even people who graduate with STEM backgrounds might end up somewhere not even in remotely related to their actual major. If I were to get a STEM job, well, I am very passionate about biology. I've always enjoyed biology. I used to think I would be great as a nurse. I realize I'm kind of faint when it comes to thinking about like surgery or like injuries. So I actually don't think I would be great. Dream job, okay, would be some sort of biologist and I get to go in the field to research marine biology or just ecosystems in general. I've seen organizations that do rescue and uh, animal rehabilitation? Or is that like a veterinarian field or a mix of both? Some of you might know that Toby ran away last month and that was really unexpected and um, totally messed up my shop or operations because I kind of just shut down for a few months, uh, for a few days. And during those days, one of the things I did was watch Our Planet on Netflix and I've always loved animal documentaries and I really liked that one too. I just never got the chance. There were some scary parts like seeing an unbalanced ecosystem, way too many of like this one species and how that affects other species. It was just super insightful and quite inspiring at the end. Hmm, okay. So how am I really? I thought I would be a lot more concise when answering this question, but in general, I'm doing uh, like, I'm, I just realized how much work I have to do on myself and it's cool. My mental health has been so bad for so long, I didn't even notice. When you're not really thinking about it and you have coping mechanisms that like act as crutches for you to be able to be high functioning at the things that you need to get by with, there's no more pretending, admitting to myself, hey, I actually don't feel okay at all about this. Why do I think that? And unpacking it. I found pretty cool books that have been helpful, podcasts, but finally I, I'm going back to therapy. Yesterday I signed up for it. I'm trying a service I haven't done before, so I'm still waiting to get matched to a specific counselor and start the session. I just hope that all around my mental state will improve and that could impact my productivity. How do you really expect anyone to be thriving with the year that we've had? So I give myself a break in terms of that but like also hey how, how can i make the best with what i'm given that's sort of what i'm trying to do right now so i've been having a long art block for a long time and yes i question my abilities am i doing enough am i as good as i think or i just question that all the time one of the ways to calm down a little bit is to get off social media when you're on the explore page sometimes you find so many inspiring people and that fires you up and you want to paint but other times it totally overstimulates me and i just get into this paralyzed like ah, i can't do anything just a few decades ago we weren't exposed to so many hundreds and thousands of different people living different lives so in our head we kind of compartmentalize all of these internet strangers always thinking that other people are doing and being more productive than us, that they're struggling less, thriving way more than us, and that we're falling behind. Seeing like my peers, sometimes I love seeing their illustrations. Sometimes it just makes me question myself, feel like I'm getting nowhere. I do feel like right now I'm nowhere. Like as in, I don't really know where I wanna go in my life. Because in college, I have this huge dream that was shattered like i became really disillusioned i started school wanting to do textiles for fashion and i wanted to do fashion because i was this one person and that person just doesn't exist anymore like i'm not that person anymore so it does make me question like do i want to even work for a fashion company because the person who wanted to work for a fashion company thought that her life was going to be like this. I really want to work on illustration because see, if I didn't do fashion and if I never pursued that career, I would want to do storytelling, um, probably animation or write graphic novels. Um, my muse currently, they're my cats. I'm a freaking cat creature. I live with two of the most charming little things and I've been sketching my cats a lot and I'm 
prepare to see a lot of cat paintings because I'm just like, hey, I have an artist block. What do I do? I'm just going to paint my cats like there's no tomorrow. And maybe one day I will expand my visual vocabulary. Do I want to continue doing textiles? Yes even if I don't want to do it on like a corporate level. A freaking textiles is like the most magical thing ever. If you learn the craft of textiles, whether it be weaving, crocheting, knitting, dyeing, I would never regret having learned what I have learned and the appreciation for textiles. I love it. I have a knitting machine I, I purchased from a friend that I haven't started using. So expect some knitting struggles from me. Sometimes to calm myself, I think about me as a 60 year old, as an 80 year old, I will probably be making art that speaks to me a lot more. Time is just such a gift. Every day is such a gift. Your health, your body is a gift. Don't, don't forget that. Don't let the fast paced world, the consumerist capitalist world like convince you that you're never enough or you'll never get there. Not feeling as rushed and knowing like, I have the time to get there someday, even if it takes me decades. Given that I will be blessed with a long life, I hope to live into three digits, right? That the world is still around and not burned to the ground by that time, um, what will my art be then? So in that sense, I'm not so worried about where I'm going and how many skills I will obtain because every day is just a new opportunity to improve those skills, to learn more. Lastly, the miscellaneous stuff. Has my style changed? I'm kind of at this blank canvas point in my life where like, you know, my hair's grown out now, it's all natural. The funniest thing is that I kind of miss having damaged, dyed hair because when it was kind of dry and crispy, it had some texture. I need some volume. You realize that my head is extra small. When I was in middle school, I had an inside joke with a guy who I called Bigfoot. Right before puberty, his feet started growing faster than the rest of his body. So I called him Bigfoot every time I saw him. And he called me small head. we will be like, Bigfoot, small head. So I'm excited. I think I'm reinventing myself. Definitely want to make a glow up video. I really enjoy watching those as well as transformation videos. I still haven't transformed myself into my high school self. I saw uh, some footage and I was like, I was sexy when I was a minor. Look at me now. I like your hair. I quite enjoy how my dark hair looks. The last time I had long black hair was when I was 15. So it's been a long time. I might as well try. Try to see if I can grow it out. And but before I had a lot of it thinned out due to the trendy layer cut at the time. Everyone was getting their tips thinned out. So I want to see how nice and thick my hair might look like. Hopefully it won't be too flat and uh, maybe I can even donate my hair if I could resist myself from dyeing it. We'll see. Lastly, I just want to talk about music for one hot second. What's my favorite song in the moment? Okay, so in the last couple months, I really fell in love with Joji. Sad songs about love. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Joji's albums. I can't remember the name of it. Was it Broadcast, like the album name. I like Nectar. I have that one. Dance, Slow Dancing in the Dark, which is the most famous track. I also love Claire O a lot. Immunity is wonderful, but her EP, um, her favorite song from her is Hello. That song just makes me want to go like play the song to me dancing just now. What was my favorite song from Lana Del Rey's new album? I actually just listened to it for the first time this morning. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. However, I find that all Lana songs, I have to listen to it a lot and it will grow on me and then I'll become obsessed with it like exactly a year and a half after the release date. A lot of the songs seem super similar. Whereas I feel like in her previous albums, they all had their own story. Whereas this one was like the whole album was a continuous song in a way with different chapters. So my favorite song as of now is probably Not All Those Who Wander Are Lost or Yosemite. And again, this is going to change because from Norman fucking Rockwell, my favorite song was Cherry, wait, was Bartender. And then now it's probably Mariner's apartment complex for sure. Those are all the questions for today. It's getting hot and I don't shave my pits. I had fun catching up with you. Thank you for keeping me company. I feel a lot better because with this last week, I've just been with everything that's going on in current events. I wanna talk about a fundraiser that I'm doing. The link is right there in the description. And just by 
announcing it on Instagram in the last day we've raised $1,500 which is incredible I made this nice painting of Bambi sleeping need a little bit of peace and calm one winner is going to be drawn in a week it's open worldwide the shipping is included so in order to enter it's five dollars minimum to purchase an entry ticket or you can share it on a social platform i think for one free entry and the drawing would be generated on better world the organization 100 percent of profits are going to be donated to the asian american pacific islander community relief fund so i hope that doing this video would um, notify some people who don't follow me on instagram also if you are not interested in getting this painting because you just don't like it you can also donate to other organizations and gofundmes of members of the aapi community so you don't have to actually use my fundraiser but i just wanted to let you know that's happening and yeah i'll see you pretty soon next week is gonna be the moving vlog until then take care goodbye Bambi doesn't normally chill over here by the toaster. I just put him there because I almost filmed the video with that backdrop. With this, 